I remember back in 2015 when I heard about a game called Bioshock Infinite. The game came out in 2013, but I'd never actually even heard of it until this time because I wasn't really a fan of this type of game. But after my friend spent some time convincing me, I finally caved in and decided to purchase this game. I came home and put it in my Xbox, and I was absolutely amazed by the beauty and depth of this game. I was in a constant sense of astonishment and bewilderment for the entire time while playing, and the game left a first impression that has still not been replicated by any other game till this day. It was my favorite game at the time, and I enjoyed every second of it, all the way up to the very end. But once I beat the game, it went back on my bookshelf, and it sat there, untouched for years. In early 2018, however, I saw a sale on the Steam store on my PC, and one of the items that were on sale was Bioshock Infinite. I looked at the game and was reminiscing on all of the good memories that I used to have in the game, and I decided to purchase it. Once I installed it, I began playing it, and I somehow felt the same exact sense of mystery and curiosity that compelled me the last time I played the game, over three years earlier. As time went on, I dove further and further into the game, and I began to truly realize that this game is freaking awesome. And because of this, I started writing down my thoughts on this game into a notebook, and now I'm making this video. So as you can probably assume, today I'm going to be talking about why Bioshock Infinite is such an amazing game, and why it's still so much fun and so popular over six years later. I just want to mention that this video has some really small spoilers, nothing too crazy, I'm not going to like give away the ending of the game or anything, but there may be a few tiny things that I do give away about the game, so if you don't want me to spoil anything, uh, I'd recommend clicking off of this video. When looking at a game like this, one of the most important things that you need to take into consideration is the story. The story is what makes the game have a purpose, and if the story isn't good, the players will question why they are playing the game. And the story is really where this game excels in my opinion. Are you afraid of God? No. But I'm afraid of you. From the very beginning phrase that is spoken in the game, the player gets a sense of mystery. There's something about this game that creates curiosity, and makes the player want to keep playing to find out what will happen next. And there's always this sudden suspicion that something isn't quite right. It feels like something is off here, and there's a deeper meaning to every action that goes on in the world, and that all of it is leading up to something bad. And this is shown from the very beginning, when the player is thrown into the story of Booker DeWitt. All we know at first is that there's a guy named Booker heading to a lighthouse in a storm, and he's looking for someone. As Booker climbs out into the lighthouse, the boat heads off into the storm, and we know that something much darker is really going on. And the more we play the game, the more we learn about what's happening. As the player sees all this weird stuff that's going on, and sees how Booker gets launched into the sky, they're motivated to keep playing, where they can find out what these events are leading into. The story is just amazing in this game, and it does a great job at compelling people to want to keep playing. Similar to what I said about Borderlands 2 in that video, the game does an amazing job at making the player feel as if they're part of the story. Upon playing this game, you instantly get immersed into the life of Booker DeWitt, and even though Booker has no idea what's going on, the player doesn't ask any questions. Even though the entire premise of this game is super unbelievable, it still does a good job of making it feel real. The game instantly immerses you into the world, and that's what drives players to keep playing. More games need to take this approach and make the player feel as if they're part of the world and part of what's going on. It's one of those things that if done right, it can make the difference between a good and bad game. When you feel involved in what's going on, and not just like you're watching it from a TV screen, you care about the outcome and try to question what you can do to change this outcome. If you feel like you can't control it, and you feel like you don't really care, you're not going to want to try to change things, which is going to drive you to play the game entirely differently. More games need to take this approach and make the player feel as if they're part of the world and part of what's going on. It's one of those things that if done right, it can make the difference between a good and bad game. When you feel involved in what's going on and not like you're watching it from a TV screen, you will care about the outcome and try to question what you can do to change this outcome. Now while we're talking about the outcome, this leads me to my next point about the story. Choices. In many games, the choices you make go on to shape the outcome of the story, and can have effects both positive and negative. For example, in some games, if you say something negative to one person, it could cause your faction reputation to go down, meaning that they won't like you, which causes you to need to go to someone else to continue your journey. And don't get me wrong, this is a great thing. Without choices, games like Fallout wouldn't be the games they are today, and they would just feel entirely different and probably not as fun. 
People love choices because it allows them to do whatever they want. Choices in this game, on the other hand, are much different. In Bioshock Infinite, the game gives you the illusion of choice. You can make choices in this game, and they seem like they're going to be super important. But the thing about these choices is that they have little to no effect on the outcome of the story. Throw the ball at the couple, you get stopped by the cops. Throw the ball at the announcer, you also get stopped by the cops. And while this could be looked upon as a bad thing by many, it leads to the ending message of the game. These illusions of choice lead up to one of the most confusing and amazing endings of any video game ever. The significance of these choices are their insignificance. Now, this may not make sense now, but if you beat the game or see the ending, it all makes sense. Well, kinda. Anyways, tying in with this great, intriguing story are the characters. While there's not a ton of characters in this game, the ones that are mentioned all have a significant role in the story. The characters are few and far between, but they're all important. Remember the announcer who tells you to throw the baseball at the couple? Yeah, he comes back later. Remember those people who took Booker to the lighthouse in the storm? Yeah, those same people pop up throughout the rest of the game, and they're the ones who ask you to make the pointless choices that you make. And they play an even bigger role in the story later on. Again, I'm not going to spoil anything, but it all ties in perfectly. Like I said, all characters serve a point, but they're also all unique. They all have unique personality traits and characteristics that make them stand out from the others. For example, the twins constantly feud about who is better, and the announcer is also an extremely rich and greedy factory owner. All of these characters are interesting and have great narratives and voice actors, for the most part. And this leads me into my first negative thing about this game. Booker's self-narration is extremely annoying and irritating. He just talks to himself constantly and it totally throws you out of the game. Looks like they expect me to sit in their fancy chair. Let's keep such questions to myself, unless I want to get made. That idiot priest needs to learn the difference between baptizing a man and drowning one. Like, I understand it at first. If I was randomly being launched into space for no reason, I would also be telling myself to stay calm. But narrating every freaking detail is so freaking irritating. Ah, oh, I see, there are four coins sitting on the ground. Looks very interesting. I need to use the bathroom. Maybe there's just no other way to do it, since Booker is alone most of the time, but I just feel as if it's unnecessary and draws the player away from the story. Let me know what you think about this in the comments below, because I'm really curious. I don't know if this is just a me thing, or if this happens to everyone. So we cover the story and the characters, and now it's time to move on to my absolute favorite part of the game. The world. As 99% of the people on planet Earth know, Columbia is freaking beautiful. No, not the country. I mean, that's beautiful too. I'm talking about the end game world. The concept of a floating steampunk city has never really been used before, and the developers in this game have done a great job with the concept. It's an extremely unique idea and probably one of the most beautiful places in pretty much any video game ever. Period. And while it is pretty, it is also intriguing. The perfection and beauty of the city makes the player feel like it's hiding something much darker and deeper and it makes the player want to continue playing to find out what this secret really is. While the player is exploring the world, there is actually depth behind every corner. It's not an open world, but it still has enough to do to not really feel confined. There are secret rooms in the houses with stuff that you can loot, and places that lead you into the depths of wherever you're at. The exploration is pretty good in a game like this, and it makes the world of Columbia feel all the more better. The world feels natural and alive. Shops will be docking in front of you, fairies will be traveling around, people will be going about their daily business, and it all seems real. Even though the setting is extremely unrealistic and pretty much impossible, Columbia makes it feel believable. I don't know how the developers managed to pull this off, but I personally feel that if the technology in this world were possible, this is exactly how it would turn out. The only way I can describe it is by saying that it feels realistically unrealistic, if that makes sense. It just feels natural. When traveling around the areas in the beginning, it's nice to stop and be able to play the carnival games in order to win some nice prizes that will help you later on, and this feeling continues throughout the rest of the game. Now while the world is good, I sometimes feel as if the game is lacking in level design. Not all the time, but it definitely has its moment. I've quite frequently gotten lost in the game and I'll end up backtracking for 10 minutes just to be able to find the place that I need to go. Levels sometimes feel as if they're either too open or too enclosed. There either isn't enough freedom, or there's too much freedom, and players get lost. And some of the levels just feel pointless, almost like a chore to complete. For example, the level where you have to fight the stupid first lady airship is literally the most irritating level I've ever come across in any game. 
It's a constant, unending fight with endless waves of enemies, and it feels as if it's a waste of time and a tedious chore. There are a few other levels that give off this same vibe, but this one is definitely the most notable. Concluding with my thoughts on Columbia, I feel as if it's one of the best looking game worlds of all time. It's beautiful, intriguing, and full of cool locations to explore. The only thing it lacks in sometimes, however, is of course the level design. But now we're going to move on to something that is kind of controversial in this game, the mechanics. Many people claim that the mechanics are too simple, and that the game feels like an extremely basic arcade gallery shooter. As for my thoughts on this claim, I would have to say both yes and no. The gameplay mechanics in this game have their good qualities, but there's also some aspects of it that are not as good. Personally, I feel as if the actual shooting mechanic is fine. It's extremely simple and arcadey, but it does fit the style of the game and makes it all the more intense and fun. And I'm completely fine with the two weapon limit. It allows the players to focus on more important things instead of worrying about which gun to choose and which items to use in the game. But on the contrary, this simplicity causes some issues with how the game is played. Since there's only one way to play the game, which is in a run and gun type of way, there's no variation in options. In a game like Dishonored, for example, you can be stealthy, action-oriented, or just avoid enemies altogether. In Infinite, on the other hand, the only option is to run straight through these enemies and mow them all down. There can be pros and cons with this system, so your opinion is based on how you look at it. And since I'm kind of in the middle with the gunplay aspect, I'll have to give it a solid meh. Another important mechanic in gaming is of course the movement system. And the movement system in this game is honestly great and satisfying. It serves its purpose without being too crazy. Ground movement is simple and keeps everything running smoothly without adding any unnecessary elements. The Skyrail experience of the movement system is extremely unique and amazing and it just feels great when you're sliding on the rails or jumping from hook to hook. It's a unique concept and the game does a great job at executing it. Melee combat is smooth and simple as well and when combined with the skyhook takedowns, it just makes it all the more satisfying. And Vigors are the perfect touch, and when you're tired of running and gunning, you can always switch to a different Vigor and use it to your advantage. It all just ties in together perfectly and makes the game feel very polished and complete. When combined with all the other stuff this game, it just makes it a true masterpiece. It may not be a 10 out of 10 like many people say, but there's no denying that this game is an absolutely awesome game. People still play it and still have a lot of fun while playing it. Considering that it's been out for this long and people are still active in the game, obviously they did something right. So what are your thoughts on this game? Do you like it? Is it overrated? Let me know in the comments below. Anyways guys, that's going to be it for today's video, so I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did enjoy this video, feel free to leave a like and subscribe to the channel, and maybe even share it with your friends if you're into that. Now before you go, I just want to mention a little announcement. I have recently created a Patreon, and if you don't know what that is, it's basically where you can back me in exchange for certain rewards. There are custom Discord ranks, access to special giveaways, uh, you can get your name in my videos or in the description, and a couple other things. I'm also starting to do something new on there, which is that I'm going to be releasing my video scripts along with the handwritten notes for all of my videos from here on out. So if you guys are interested in more of like a behind the scenes of how these types of videos work, that is definitely the place to check it out. Anyways guys, like I said, thank you so much for watching, I'll see you guys next time, and peace.